jo Michael Jones up there against one of these guys, so. Right. So it'll be, it's, this is fun. Yeah, I agree. And not normally who we would see competing against each other. No. First up, we have Team Dragon Squad. Um... Makate's got his body core rash guard on. I dig that. So does Michael John. Representing. We have uh, Michael John up on the mat first, followed by Chris Makate. Yep. And Josh Squires again. And the Joshua Squires will be the last one on the mat. We have following. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> we have uh, Team Hooligans. They're going to be facing. Uh, we have Chewy uh, Urbina, followed by Quinton Rosenwig and Adrian Nez. I got a hug from Quinton, and uh, you know Adrian's from my home state. I see him quite a bit, a bit at the local tournaments. Okay, refed a couple of his. And you're with screwed Ant up on some points on some of his matches, but you know, the right person always won. <laughs> Anthony Burchek's gym attracts the best. It does. I Tony's gym does attract quite a unique crew of people. Uh, Team Hooligans gets the, uh, no, it's it's Team Dragon Squad gets the matchup. So Chris Makate is uh, facing off against Chewy Urbina. Wow. If this match goes to overtime, Chewy is going to be deciding the overtime. I'm curious how this will go with Chewie's wrestling background as both well. Are, yes, both very strong wrestlers. This will be interesting in very different body types. Chewie has... Uh, shucked him off so quick. You know, it's going to be hard to get in on Chewie. I'd like to see Chris try. Um, I'd like to see kind of what strat what his strategy is, um, whether he's using that heavy snap down like we saw in his, his previous match, which he did. Yep, dra grabbing the head. But again, Chewie, you really have to yank that head off if, if you want to get a tap. He is incredibly d tough to submit. Which makes, makes me think we're going to see an overtime in this match. Some real, Chris real does, strong He pressure. loves that snap down that to the, the chin strap. Yeah, that he's chin got an interesting tight. lock here. It's a gable grip right and he's under the chin. Yeah. He, he's got that body pressing down on that gable yep. grip too. And oh, Chewie escapes it, but man, that looked nasty. That does look nasty. And, and what that does is he has a gable grip underneath his head and he has Chewie's head underneath his rib cage. Yep. So it's pushing the back of that head into the choke. Um, but it didn't look like he had that gable gri grip quite underneath Chewie's neck. Strong snap down. Chewie's able to recover and get to guard. Stands up again. Looks unfazed. But that was so Chewie's deep. Chewie's never phased. I don't think his, 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 his face never changes. I've never seen it change. He's a gamer. We get double underhooks. Chris, uh, but Chewie's able to get those legs in. Again, I mean, that's, he's, it's going to be hard to get past him just because his, his proportions are, are so much shorter than probably Chris has been used to passing. And so he's able to get into those areas that it's mm -hmm. um, that any kind of space that Chris leaves. Chris wants to stand up again. That's cool. <laughs> That's kind of a, a gentleman's agreement, you know. Sure. Um, Chewie goes ahead and stands up. Chris is snapped on side control. This is just real strong. I know Chewie's also strong, but there's a little bit of a size difference here. But again, it... Chewie always has that, and he's always oh, proven he, yeah. it doesn't matter. Oh, absolutely. Definitely one of the toughest grapplers that I've, I've ever met. Sure. Yeah, and I've seen him take matchups with just about anybody, especially oh, in the dojo. Oh, he doesn't care. Yeah. teaches a great seminar too, a guillotine seminar. We had him at uh, Santa Fe last year for the Our Life uh, seminar tour with the 10th Planet guys. Yeah. And Chewie came up with Ruben Rivera. It was great. Oh, I bet. And Chris. Chris. And, they, and they did the belt ceremony. That's when Jen Rivera got her brown belt. It was oh, amazing nice. to see that. Her husband we're, we're gave it to her. We're going to see her uh, later today. Yes. 
She competed last week as well in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Wow. She's a gamer too. Heavy shoulder pressure by Chris. You really don't want to be in there. It just grinds your face. Yeah, he really is. You're not going to get the tap there, but it's it, just, it's it, a struggle. Yeah, it's pressure and grinding and, and, and just heavy, heavy, heavy position. Just stretching Chewy out. I wonder how much uh, experience with catch wrestling Chris does has. I mean, if he had that shoulder pressure, and I would have, I mean, he could have gone to kind of almost a case of Katami kind of hold and, and put a lot of pressure on Chewy. I I know coming from R Russ Mura, it's just a, a mixture of jujitsu styles. Russ is very yeah. inventive. Okay. Um, and if he's learning that style, then yeah, he, he's kind of creating this as he goes and just staying real heavy on top, yeah. which we're seeing now. Yep, with Chris on, on mount position, he's he's peeled Chewy's arms up away from his rib cage and above his head, just putting a tremendous amount of pressure on him. Russ really pays attention to the martial art of jiu-jitsu and the time limits and things of constraints that are brought on by a sport aren't necessarily something that his focus is on, even though he... What do you mean by that? Meaning that a, he will force a win. He will just hang in there until he can grind a win out. Oh, okay. Regardless of time limits and rules. Mm -hmm. The sport really does take away from the art, even though we've carried forward and seen some changes in the game of jiu-jitsu. Well, I think it's interesting. I mean, I, I would, I love that the sport of jujitsu has changed, and there there are these these different rule sets, and there are people who are who excel in this rule set versus another rule set. Um, you know, I, it would be boring if if they were all IBJJF rules, That's right? That's a fact. That's a fact. And with combat bringing striking back into it, even if it is open hand, that does change it a bit sure. too. And it's oh, so important yeah. to bring that back. No, I, I worked a little bit with, uh, um, trained a little bit with Nikki Sullivan, preparing her for her combat jujitsu, and, and it was interesting to see how certain hits opened up things. Yeah. yeah but changes. you didn't want to just hit indiscriminately, sure. or a slap, rather. Sure. We have less than 30 seconds left in this match. You strike with purpose in that ma in, in, a, in a combat match. Just when yeah. Hard, heavy pressure by Chris. But the overtime is um, is going to be determined by Chewy. He's going. He's probably going to choose EBI rules. Is that it's a tough match. Really, really different styles from both yep. of these guys. So he's chosen spider web on Again. the left arm. Um, whenever you want a spider web, you want a spider on the weak arm of your opponent. So um, for those viewers who, if you decide to to try this rule set out in the future, um, make sure you make that key distinction. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't spider web on somebody's strong arm. I didn't see Chewy reach for the leg on the last he did. overtime. Yeah, he did. That's a common uh, practice. I saw a lot of the other guys. I didn't recognize him doing that. So he immediately did this time, mm -hmm. holding Chris in position, trying to get that, that, that ride arm time free in the ride time as well. It's a little bit of both and grinding him back down. Chris's legs are so long. He's just trying to get them in front of Chewy. Try to get to he's his really knees. He's really bridging, yeah. He's really bridging to get back up to his yeah. knees. If Chris can get to his knees, that's he has a better opportunity for defending the armbar um, because he's able to, to really pressure down and stack Chewy on his back as he tries to wiggle that arm out. And he's out. Yep. He's up, up on his knees. And he, Chewy gets a tap. That was wow. awesome. And that's Another the risk. Time. You know, if, yeah. if you do go to your knees and you lift somebody, you, you risk straightening that arm. So, um, Chris has decided to take Chewie's right arm for spider web, and he needs to get a submission faster than Chewie did. Um, I didn't see what the time was on that. I did not, but it's high pressure. I didn't hear him call it out just yet, but we're gonna have to wait and see what happens here. Again, Chewie, from a 10th Planet background. He's very proficient in escaping. He's, he's worked this so many times. But Chris is strong, man. Look at, oh, I mean. Oh, gosh, yeah. It's there already. He busted that loose and Chewy we turned. flipped That was out. crazy. That was crazy. We're still live. Holy I can't cow. believe that. I cannot believe that. That, that wow. looks so dangerous. And I think that may be quicker. Wow. That was a quicker escape time. Yeah, that was, a, oh, definitely a quicker escape Chewy. time. Excellent work. Again. But testament to this rule set. You know, uh, Chris.
Chris was dominant. Then. Dominant. Just yeah. absolutely sure. dominant the entire uh, regulation time. But Chewie knows that rule set. He knows the overtime rules. He's just going to go out there you. and like. My dude. We so have. Technical problem. They'll catch it. They'll catch it. <laughs> that was amazing. But yes, Chewy came over for a handshake, knocked us off balance a little bit. I nice. think we're back. Next up, we have Adrian Nez versus Joshua Squires. Again, Nez, like I said, he's going to sit down and he's going to invert and he's going to look for those legs. So Josh needs to worry about that. Um, kind of a neat strategy, inverting with Nez keeping those legs out of Nez's grip. Uh, again, when you're, as I mentioned before, you want to clear that knee. Joshua needs to keep that knee away from, ne uh, out of Nez's uh, hip line. Sure. And Nez just has that focus. He's just relentless. Yeah, he, he's never, never phased. Um, Nez is another one that I don't see his expression change very much. Is he also there at, at Tucson 10th Planet? No, he comes down um, every once in a while. He's up in Phoenix at, uh, I wrote the gym down. It's uh, 12th Street Jiu-Jitsu in Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona native. Um, like I said before, he's a member of the Navajo Nation, which is uh, one of the largest tribes sure. in the country. So it's really cool to Especially see um, him this. represent the tribe yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, they need that. A wonderful representative of the tribe and, and, and Native Nations in the sport of Jiu-Jitsu. They had a tough year last year, the Navajo Nation, so it's good that he's out here competing. I'd love to oh, see yeah. him represent that. And they got hit by COVID hard. Right. I've He's attended their powwows. Looks like a little bit of a Texas clover leaf. Yes. And they're almost they're rolling off the edge of the mat. Still live. The Navajo Warriors. Joshua are doing a wonderful job of keeping that knee out of Nez's uh, danger zone. Yes, Denim back Making uh, Adrian work for those leg locks. Yeah, he's not falling into that. We not letting him set anything up. We're about halfway through this uh, match. Three minutes left. Getting the knee slice, trying to get through. It's really, really difficult to to pass Nez's guard um, because he is so proficient at rolling underneath you. And I think that's what Joshua is trying to do is he's trying to pass and, you know, get his legs out of of a dangerous spot. But ne Nez is inverting and rolling through and just catching those legs. That's his forte. Now Josh finds himself on his back. Nez also has incredible pressure. And drops right back to take a leg. Three minutes. Looking for that heel hook. Yep. But as we saw in the past place. match, um, Joshua was able to slip he heel tapped, hooks he and we get the tap. Is that a, looked like he, he switched from heel hook to a straight ankle. Looking at the replay real quick. He went belly down. I think it was a straight ankle. It's hard to tell from that angle, but. Hooligans gets the three point win and they've they're going on to the finals. Yes. There's not gonna be another That's match. It. Yep. That's it. Leaving Quentin <laughs> fresh for the finals round. What? That was some So again, um, incredible as match. we saw in the last match, Team Our Life CBD also win won two matches. So they have a fresh person. Um, Kyle Chambers is their fresh, right? Yeah. It's yeah, Kyle's, Kyle is fresh. Quentin's fresh. Man, I'd love to see them fight each other. 